You know what I like? Old technology. Yeah, who needs stuff like Spotify when I have a Beethoven cassette with the face of a serial killer on it? Whether we're talking about old formats for music or video, old tech for mundane purposes, my headphones are burgers, or just anything analog, I've always found it fascinating. But ever since I built my epic game or PC a few years ago, combined with me watching a lot of LGO on YouTube, I started to gain an interest in retro PC gaming, and thus, retro PCs. My PC journey has been a bit interesting. I started with some IBM machine when I was like two that I remember basically nothing about. Eventually we got a Windows ME machine, which was sometime in the mid 2000s. I don't understand why my family never went with Windows XP, but at least my elementary school had some Windows XP Dell computers. I remember around 2008 or so, I watched a ton of videos about Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, and I really wanted that game. Next thing I knew, my ninth birthday came, and I received Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Platinum. I tried to install it on my piece of shit ME machine, but it never booted up. Whoa. We used that as an excuse to upgrade to a new PC, so we went to Best Boy and got a Windows Windows Vista Vista PC. PC. In hindsight, I find it funny how we kept skipping all the big boy versions of Windows and kept getting the poopy ones. Fast forward to this current nightmare of a pandemic. Well, I've been continuing my addiction of watching way too much YouTube content. And one of the channels I find myself constantly returning to was LGR. And especially his videos about building retro computers. Videos which really reminded me how much I've been wanting to build some retro PCs myself. So remembering that we still had our old Windows Vista machine that we never used anymore. Plus the sheer boredom of everything being closed. I decided to grab it out of the same closet and convert it into a Windows XP machine. It was a massive pain downgrading or I guess upgrading to XP and trying to find replacement drivers since I couldn't reuse any of the Vista drivers that were already on it. But I finally found everything and got a working Windows XP computer. Excited, I tried to boot up the game only to find that it didn't work. None of the games I had worked. After God knows how much trial and error, I found out that I needed another driver for the integrated graphics. Uh oh. There was no driver for it on XP. Considering I was planning on doing this anyways, I went on eBay and found a $7 graphics card. And in. And in. And in. And in. And in. Oh my god. And in NVIDIA GeForce. 7300 LE. I didn't know much about the card except that it came out in 2005 which was the era I wanted to get a card from and it was also cheap as fuck. Ah my camera no it ruined the shot. Even though all I did was repurpose my old computer from a decade ago. I love using it. Something about using Windows XP again after god knows how long on actual hardware and not a virtual machine and constantly tickering around with it, buying more accessories and stuff for it like an old Dell keyboard, which was one of the kinds of keyboards my elementary school had back in the day. All of it, in a way, is more enjoyable to use than my modern PC that I sunk $900 into. It brings me back to a simpler time for me, when I just did dumb shit on my computer. Playing Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 or 3, watching YouTube, or even making videos in Windows Movie Maker. Even the computer's technological limitations add a lot to it for me. After I installed the Anon 7300 LE, I realized that even for that era of computers, how shitty of a graphics card it was. But in a way, I really like that. 
<laughs> Instead of playing these games on my modern computer with maxed out graphics and constant 60 frames of second. 60 frames of sec. 60 frames of. I get to experience them in what feels like a more authentic way. Obviously, at some point, it becomes unplayable. The computer struggles with Call of Duty War at War, and even on the lowest settings, the particles kill the game's performance. But even in those cases, it's fascinating to see how far the computer can go. The fact that it can run it at all, and all the ways the computer cripples the game. It's so fascinating to me. However, to me, this is just the beginning of what I want to do with this PC. One thing I really need to work on, outside of making a separate setup for the computer when I eventually move into my own place, is some better accessories. I really like the Dell keyboard that I mentioned earlier, but I need to get a better mouse than the garbage one I currently have that I found in my closet. Plus, the main thing I really want to get into is just more PCs. I'd love to get a Windows 95 or 98 PC for 90s gaming. Future me here to say I totally didn't spend so long editing this video that I bought a Windows 98 computer after I recorded the video. Totally, totally didn't do that or anything. And while I enjoy my current XP computer a lot, I want more. <laughs> And what I really want the most are some old Dells from the 2000s. Not anyone in particular, except something like the ones my old elementary school had. However, I feel like I should wait to buy more PCs. Mainly due to, one, my lack of space. And two, I literally only have like 10-ish PC games on my shelf. And most of them are for Windows XP. And the older ones still work on my XP computer or my modern PC. Yeah, I could probably download all the games I could ever want from Abandoned Whale, but I love owning physical media, and PC physical media interests me a lot since it's usually way harder to find than console games. And I oddly enjoy the massive variety in packaging. Not just the big box versus small box versus DVD case, but like the banner style on the box saying that it's a PC game. If it even has a banner. Hell, even games for Windows Live interest me. Not because of the service itself, but because seeing the cases that have the same kind of consistency as console cases on a platform that does not require any form of consistency is so weird and interesting to me that I'm honestly debating how I want to organize my PC games when I get enough of them. Wow, this sounds pathetic to say out loud. Overall, I'm really glad I'm starting to get into all of this old PC shenanigans. I've actually been losing interest in gaming for like a year or so, but now I have this new aspect of gaming that I've never properly explored before. Yeah, I've always had computers with some PC games to play on them that I did play a lot, but never near the amount as with console gaming for me. But in a way, I've always found PC gaming fascinating to me, even if in my teens I was a PC hater. I mentioned him a few times in the video already, but LGL on YouTube really ignited my interest in retro PCs. I used to only watch his LGL Thrift series, which I still really enjoy, but after building my own PC and enjoying the satisfaction of using a complicated piece of technology to play games and do work that I assembled myself, LGL really exposed me into how interesting old computer tech was, and his build videos really got me interested in building my own retro PCs. You got the freedom and pride of making your own unique system, but making it for older software and tech. Just has been massively addicting for me to look into and try to do myself with my love of old tech in general. And while I'm not at the point where I can build a retro PC completely from scratch, 
I'm happy I finally begun my journey into retro PCs with my XP computer, and I can't wait to see where this interest goes from here. In before I have like 50 computers in my closet. <laughs> Burgers.